on today's show. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. It's good to be a Padres fan. Dylan Cease making history. No hitter. Let's get into it. You are locked on Padres, your daily San Diego Padres podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Lockdown Padres Podcast. Sorry about that. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day for Friday, July 26th. As always, I am your host with sometimes occasionally, but certainly not always the most, Javier Reyes. You might be familiar with my baseball-related work over at Just Baseball. You can check that out where I recently just wrote about the Padres' three trades that I think that they should go for. Some players, officially, who I think that they should go for at this deadline that is getting, it's it's rolling, folks, it's rolling. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Javipeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O. Um, check out also my new podcast for Just Baseball, Baseball versus the World. New episodes every week, usually Tuesdays and sometimes Wednesdays, uh, about just fun, evergreen baseball topics. Follow that on the Instagram, um, at Baseball vs. World, or at Baseball vs. World on Twitter. Today's episode, guys, we are recapping what else but the no-hitter thrown by Dylan Cease, and I got a lot to talk about because it was a whole experience. I mean, how can I not spend the episode talking about Dylan Cease and his no-hitter? It was it was truly something to behold, and it was important, I think, for him, considering that he has had a little bit of an up-and-down season, you know what I mean, in a lot of ways. Like, he's been good, don't get me wrong. He's still been very, very good for this team. He's kind of saved this team in a lot of ways. But it is very funny that uh, he he went through such a weird stretch, and then now he's out here making Padres history, guys. Today's episode, guy, guys, though, is brought to you by Supply House. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to get parts fast. Shop for your next plumbing, HVAC, or electrical job, and get fast shipping from coast to coast at supplyhouse.com. Um, where do I begin? First, let's start off soft before we really dig in. I just want to quickly just mention what else happened in this game, right? Uh, it, it wasn't anything crazy, but the Padres, they win by a score of three, obviously two nothing. Uh, and the big hits coming from Donovan Solano. He goes two for four in this game and he scores a run. Xander Bogarts, he draws a walk and gets a single in this game as well. So Bogarts, hey, I'm not, it's, he's not giving us like the doubles or the extra base hits that maybe we would like, but he's getting hits, he's getting on base, so that's nice to see so far. And then the hero of the game in the very first inning, which is the funniest part about this, is that the only scoring in this game is the first inning with the bases loaded. Um, Hassan Kim gets the bases clearing double, uh, allowing all the runs to score, and he actually goes two for four on the day, he also gets a single later on. Um, love Hassan Kim, and I tweeted out on Twitter, we gotta be careful not to take that guy too, uh, too much for granted. Right, because while yes, his batting average is a little bit down, his offensive, you know, if people were expecting him to make another leap the same way he made a leap last year in his offense, that seems to not have happened. And his batting average has been down, but he's still got an on base percentage to make up for it. And that defense is still electric. But nonetheless, um, Hassan Kim, the hero in terms of the offense of that day, and they really needed Dylan Cease to perform because, like I said, that was it for the rest of the game. Yeah, you had some hits from Donovan Solano, you had a hit from Jerickson Profar, a double, of course, because Profar is always there for us. But all in all, you know, not a big offensive performance from the Padres, and that's one of the things we talked about, by the way, so it's still worth keeping an eye on this team's ability to make lefties look a lot better than they are. Patrick Corbin goes deep into this game. As I kind of talked about with our guy, um, Ryan Clary of Locked On Nationals for the crossover preview, where we mentioned, I was like, hey man, I know Corbin's like the worst pitcher in baseball. I think since 2019, they said his ERA is like 6.15, something crazy like that. Um, but in this game, seven innings, Three earned runs on four hits, three walks, seven Ks. So, like, again, just as a little bit of a criticism, the Padres did, once again, did not hit well against the lefty. And it was a bad lefty. It's not like they were facing Chris Sale or anything like that, right? So, just really, really rough performance from the offense. But, of course, who cares? Let's talk about Dylan Cease. Look, there have been times that I've seen people complain about Cease. I understand, right? I understand part of it. And the big reason is that he does have these starts where you're like, what the heck? And he does have these starts where people have been telling and, and shouting about how this guy has Cy Young potential. And you look at it, and it's like, yeah, 
he's only had an ERA above four, uh, I'm sorry, below four, like twice. And some people might look at that and say, well, look at this. Last year he has a 4.58. And then, you know, the year before that, 3.91, even then. So people might be wondering, well, the Chris Archer allegations, who, for those who don't remember, Chris Archer got a lot of strikeouts and then fell off because he just had such a super high ERA that it didn't matter, right? Robbie Ray, I think, was like that a little bit, although he turned things around with the Mariners and it's certainly the Blue Jays when he won the Cy Young. But I think that there was some rightful criticism. You know, his fastball velocity dipped down last year. But all in all... Here's the thing. Bottom line is Dylan Cease, the one thing that I think that's hurt him this year is he's been giving up a lot more home runs than usual. Home run five ball rate. Uh, I'm sorry. His home runs per nine inning last year was 0.97 and the year before that was 0.78. So this year it's 1.11. So he's been giving up a higher home run rate just to, to simplify it, I guess. Right. So that's not great. But it's still not that high, and most importantly, he's not walking as many batters, right? That's the biggest difference between him and last year, is that the K rate is certainly up 32.5% this year, and then uh, his walk rate 7.6% compared to 10% the previous year. So awesome stuff for him, really good stuff. Um, I will say that while, yes, he has those annoying little blips, while he does have those moments, and he's going to have another stretch, I bet you by the end of the season, but... As we talked about after the Mets sweep, if you guys remember that, when he got absolutely tuned up by Pete Alonso hitting a home run off of him, I still stand by my opinion, and it's been proven somewhat right lately, that he is going to be somewhere between the middle of what he was at the beginning of the season in March and April when he had a 2.78 ERA, 140 batting average against, nobody could hit him, and then in May when he had a 4.08 ERA, which was awful, but it was still eh, and then 4.94 in June... Don't worry, though. He's bounced back. 3.42 ERA, not accounting for yesterday's start in July. He's just been so phenomenal for so long. And here's the thing. An ace pitcher doesn't mean you go out and are an ace every single time, right? That's great. I would love if we had Derek Cole or, or Derek Cole, Garrett Cole or Jacob deGrom or, heck, Yamamoto when he was still healthy or, you know, some of those the best pitchers in baseball type of thing. Chris Sale, uh, Seth Lugo, apparently. <laughs> It makes me sad. Sorry, guys. Might have struck a nerve there. But of course you want that. But I do think people make a mistake sometimes of jumping to conclusions with pitchers like this who are going to probably have a rough stretch uh, when all in all, he's still been very good. And as evidenced by some of the peripheral stats that we've seen all year, his FIP is still really good. That's a big thing. If he was getting lit up and I saw his FIP start to go up and he was walking more batters, then we can talk about it, right? But overall, he's got a FIP of 2 point, I'm sorry, 3.03 .03 on the season so far. Like, that's amazing. This guy is an ace. Just because he's not at every time doesn't mean he's not at ace. Um, and what else, though, let me tell you is that watching this game, I was actually uh, working on that aforementioned trade article about what the Padres should do at the trade deadline, and I had to finish it quickly. I only had, like, an hour or so, and because I was heading out to see... Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, so that's what I did. Uh, but I was focused, and I had the Social Network soundtrack. Whoever's ever seen that, it is a great white noise soundtrack. If you've got an hour and you've got to finish something, put on the Social Network soundtrack. You're going to feel like a god if you have to. You know what I mean? Use it as, like, your last resort. Um, and I was doing that, and then meanwhile, I'm looking at the TV, and I'm like, I keep looking up, I keep looking up, and I keep... Oh, wait, we're past the seventh inning? We're past the eighth inning? You know what I mean? It was really, really weird. I was nervous about that first batter. Um, I forgot who it was exactly in the ninth. Uh, Il Demero Vargas. Uh, I was nervous about that one because it was a long at bat, right? It was like multiple pitches and I was just nervous. I was like, oh man, don't happen here. Don't happen here. I will say, tiny thing. I loved how into it Cease was. After that eighth inning, he was doing like a thing. And I like that he wasn't trying to play it cool necessarily. Like the man wanted the no hitter. And I can understand that. And frankly, and, and this is a little bit of a tangent, but I really love when athletes aren't like hiding from the fact that they want to achieve a career accomplishment, even if it's a personal one. There's nothing wrong with that, right? You gotta be careful, right? You don't wanna be like, you know, you know you're, you're down by 45 and then you, you, you hit a home run and then you're like running around the bases like you own the place. That looks bad, but all in all, I think it's weird when we have to pretend or sometimes athletes have to pretend like, yeah, I'm just happy you won the game. It's like, nah, man, you threw a no-hitter, that's great. And Cease did not do that, but I, I like the way he was pounding himself. He looked into it like he wanted it. And there's a really important reason for why he won that. We're going to talk about some of the stats, some of the fun numbers that emphasize why this no-hitter was fantastic. And some more thoughts on that. And just uh, enjoying the good vibes, ladies and gentlemen, in just a second. But first, 
I want to talk to you guys about one of our sponsors today. You know them. You love them. You've probably heard their slogan before. It is booking.com. Booking. Yeah, <laughs> folks, let me tell you, uh, with summer travel heating up, especially travel for baseball games, even if you want to go to your rival city, whatever it is, you need to explore Folks, you need to explore the wonderful litany, the myriad, the multitude of options over at Booking.com with hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation, rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com. You just might find your perfect stay. You know, if you're a New York fan heading to Boston to catch a baseball game on Boston's turf, you want to know, you know, if they got lobster rolls and, you know, some cool landmarks and maybe, I don't know, clam chatter. Is that what they're known for? So you can check that out. They'll have all the places in that for you from hotels that overlook the stadiums to family-friendly resorts. Booking.com has so many choices across the U.S. for your summer travel this MLB season the right stay can make you a fan of any city including your rivals book today on booking.com on the site or in the booking.com app but that's not all of course folks you know i like doing the double ads sometimes for y'all and this is no different we're talking about though FanDuel, folks here's the thing i love sports I love them so much. I never want them to stop all year round. I want them. But right now, we kind of just got baseball right now. Yeah, you got the other thing. You got Team USA coming up. But right now, it's just kind of baseball. You know, WNBA is out. NBA Finals are done. Football is still a month away. But with FanDuel, you can still get your, your uh, you know, what's it? Your taste. Satiate your appetite of sports content because FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers for for every day, right? With a bonus or a boost, whatever it is, daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So what are you waiting for? Head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Go check it out. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we are back here on the Lockdown Padres podcast, thriving and most certainly vibing. Um, some other things about the Dylan C. Snow hitter I want to talk about. What's so crazy is maybe the reason he was amped is because you might forget Dylan Cease was eight and two thirds innings close to getting a no hitter back when he was with the White Sox. I actually remember watching it. And here's the fun part. Do you know who got the hit to break up the no hitter? Luis Arise, who is on the Padres now. I mean... Again, I, I made this you know comment a while ago, but and I won't get into the full anecdote. Watch the first episode of Sports Night if you want to fully understand. But there are just moments that remind you why you like sports. And I really think that it's that little detail right there. It just showcases the beauty of baseball and the beauty of, frankly, just sports in general. And just how much it's, it's so much more. You know what I mean? So when people say, oh, you just want to see man hit ball. You know, the people who, who like... I go out of their way to be ignorant about sports. I hate that like vernacular of, of talking about them. The sports bowl when the Super Bowl's on, that type of stuff. That like there's so much lore there though. And that it, it contributes and there's so many reasons why. And the more you get into it, the more you understand. And I just really think that little part of it really brings the point home. And I think it's amazing. Um But that's not all, folks. Also, just from at just baseball media, this is a really, really wild stat, actually. Dylan Cease, his last 22 innings, folks. Let me tell you, guess what? He's only allowed two hits. He's the first pitcher in Major League Baseball history to do that over a three-game span. I mean, what the heck, man? That's all, that's wild, you know what I mean? And it's, and it's you know, we, 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 we bring up a lot, like, you know, Blake Snell sometimes and how historic his Cy Young season was. Even though it wasn't the best Cy Young season ever, it was just so unique because of the walk rate. Like, Dylan Cease, look at him making some history in his own way. So once again, it's just so funny how perfectly he's fit in for Snell and how good he's been from the start, even though he had a little bit of a, you know, rough start. Don't get me wrong. But um, I just really love when you get moments like that. And it just, you know, furthers the history and whatnot. And obviously, obviously... Second no-hitter in Major League Baseball history. Yes, I very much appreciate the hug from our boy Joe Musgrove, right? Obviously, it, it doesn't hit the same as first no-hitter in Major League Baseball history. Or, I'm sorry, in Padres history because, you know, that was just like it hadn't been done. You know what I mean? And literally, a friend of mine locked on MLB's um, uh, Paul Francis Sullivan. Like, one of his bits was tweeting every day whoever the Padres starter was and would say, I predict today they would throw the no-hitter. 
And he would do that because it was like a long bit that would eventually have a payoff. And then it went viral. Some people didn't get it. You know what I mean? And they were just like, what? You tweet this every day. Some people didn't know he tweeted every day. So they were like, you know, he got crazy retweets. I think MLB Network and something featured the tweet, something like that. But, you know, just because it doesn't hit for me quite the same just because that was literally the only time it ever happened for them, it's still really immaculate. And the performance itself was very good. Don't get me wrong, it's not the best lineup in the Nationals, but 11 whiffs on 31 swings of a slider. With the fastball, he had six whiffs as well. It wasn't technically, I think, his most dominant. I know that sounds weird, but I think that his start um, from a few few games ago, I believe, uh, was it against the Brewers? I'm going to look up, actually, who it was that he pitched against uh, really quickly. I think it was the... The Cleveland one? Was it Cleveland or was it Atlanta? I forgot which one it was, but it was one of those in which he generated like a multi-quadrillion amount of whiffs. It was Cleveland or Atlanta, and those are really good lineups. So I think that in a really technical, nitpicky way, I don't think this was like his best start of the season, but it's certainly his most memorable, and it was mightily impressive, and he deserves all the flowers in the world. Second no-hitter of Padres history, just doesn't get old. And it's interesting, with the Padres trade deadline coming up, you know, I'm curious because I think this is going to start people talking about and, and engaging in the conversation of, like, should they extend Cease? You know, I mean, they've got him for another year. They also have Michael King for another year. One thing to look out for, in my opinion, this trade deadline is to see how much they commit to getting starting pitching, right? Are they going to go for some rentals or are they going to go for some big fish? Because that might give you a look into how they feel about potentially keeping either of those two players past next year, right? My personal opinion is... I just want to wait till next year, right? Like, I, I, don't get me wrong. I know you could get a more friendly friendly contract if you were to extend, you know, Michael King especially um, right now. But in my opinion, he's been a little bit too much on a heater um, that it might still cost a decent amount. But my thing is I just don't want to lock too much more of this roster in. You already set your bed. You got to have at least some flexibility. Because look at what happened with Musgrove. Most reliable pitcher, and then all of a sudden look where he is right now, right? So things can change and you want to be ready for the change you spend money but you got to have a decent amount of slots open to exchange or to make trades and oh well we don't think Xander Bogart is good anymore more um so maybe you wouldn't want to get a new shortstop in the future or if you're let's say um I don't know let me, let me think of an example you know he's been terrible and he's mentioned every five minutes in group chats that I'm in DJ LeMahieu Right? DJ LeMahieu is like DJ ground out these days. And what happened? All the fans want to extend him, extend him. He's so good for us. And look, he's just a blank, you know, player now that doesn't do anything. And there's some third baseman out there they could get, but they have LeMahieu there. And it's just not working out. Obviously, they could buy him out. That's a whole other discussion. But hopefully, I'm making sense for y'all. Hopefully. I hope I'm making um, sense. Um, that's not all, though, guys. What I love is is also a funny comment from Joe Musgrove that I enjoyed. Uh, this one from, this was tweeted by uh, Dennis Lynn. He said, um, rent's going up, referring to Dylan Cease, who's been staying in Joe Musgrove's guest house since April. That's really funny. Uh, I really, really enjoyed that very much. Uh, Musgrove really feels like the leader, like heart and soul of this team in a lot of ways sometimes. Obviously, you got Tatis Patu, but it feels like that. And at Miserable SD fan. <laughs> Eric, uh, no longer miserable. You might have seen him if you're on Padres Twitter. He tweeted, LMAO at the Nationals, by the way, started some some bleep last month and then just went 0-6 against San Diego and got no hit to cap it off. Poverty. I'm not going to go as far as the po poverty part, only because, you know, they did win a World Series, guys, so I'm not going to call them a poverty franchise. But let me tell you, it feels good. 0-6 since those little losers came after our boy Profar and look how they got treated. And no hair to cap it off. It's like the baseball gods are rewarding. The baseball gods were like, no. Jerks and Profar is beautiful. He's amazing soul. This is one of the best stories in baseball. I know I'm biased, but I genuinely think it is the best story in baseball this year. If uh, Outside the big, you know, headliner mainstream, oh, Tani's good, whatever. I really do think that Jerks and Profar is the best story in baseball this year. And the baseball gods just struck them with some karmic implications. I love it. Really, really good stuff from the Padres. And in general, I think that... Look, it gets really hard being a Padres fan every now and then. It's really frustrating to have this huge budget and have only one season when you've won more than 85 games, 89 in fact, and then the manager who was responsible for, not responsible, but the manager in charge of that team then gets let go because he gets doesn't get along with the GM. Bad stuff. You have them bad contracts. We're worried about Xander Bogarts becoming the next Eric Hosmer type of player, right, in the sense that he just crowds up everything. Um, really, really rough. But, you know, it's... 
never been more fun to be a Padres fan. I mean, I think this is since the 90s. And even that 90s team, while it did have some stars, you had Caminetti, you had Steve Finley, you had, um, you still had Tony Gwynn, you had, you had Ricky Henderson, past his prime Ricky Henderson. Don't get me wrong, that was an exciting time too. But this is easily the most exciting time the Padres have had in nearly 30 years. That's how long ago that was. So even if you're not a believer in this team, they are still so much better than where they are. I mean, come on. Since I've been hosting this podcast, we had the Cardinals moment. We had the no hitter with Musgrove, and then we just had another one. So like, yes, it's frustrating, but remember, it can be a lot worse, and you don't have to look far. Go to ask the Colorado Rockies how they're doing, right? So I just think, um, you know, this was just a reminder that yes, things can get bad. They could still miss the playoffs. But there's hope, and I do think that that means a lot. I really do. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is not it for today's episode. I want to spend the last segment, the same way I've been spending a lot of my last segments lately, talking a little bit about the trade deadline and some players that I am most interested in because there was a trade yesterday. That matters a lot that we got to talk about. But first, I want to just take one second to talk to you about the legends. The, 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 The goats over at Supply House. Folks, get supplies from the site that's made for the skilled trades, supplyhouse.com. It is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product product info to help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over two or I'm sorry, 400 top brands. I almost I almost messed it up. It's even more than I thought. My gosh. And get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. And if you need help with an order, you can get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person every dang time. Pros and skill trades can give you a competitive edge. Just got to join SupplyHouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. It's pretty cool, right? Join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at supplyhouse.com slash TM and order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com. Go check it out. And we're back, everybody, thriving and absolutely, most certainly, most definitively and definitely vibing here on the Lockdown Padres podcast, your team every day. Um, Last little nugget I forgot to mention. Jackson Merrill made, like, one of the weirder plays that I've seen, and I don't know if I've ever seen it, at least not in a while. Xander Bogart tried to make, like, the basket catch, you know, veering from second base back out, and Jackson Merrill runs in, and it bounces off of Xander Bogart's glove into Jackson Merrill's glove, which was just great. Jackson Merrill, just a joy, no matter what's going on. That man has just been one of the joys of this season, really. Um, And Bogart's is laughing. He's like, hey, you helped me out. The power of friendship, as I tweeted on my personal Twitter account. I have a man, J A V I I P E N O. Um, let's talk about though. Let's. And by the way, what's funny about that Merrill thing? Every this is a little bit of a trope, but people tend to. You hear a lot of the old heads say it that like whenever you get a no hitter or like a perfect game, there's always like the one play that could have gone wrong that a good defensive play was made. This wasn't quite like good elite like diving catch like the infamous. Uh, Mark Burley, perfect game. If you guys remember back in the day, the insane catch, I forgot the outfield on the White Sox, made to save the perfect game. Um, That's what I, uh, you know, that's what people reference a lot. So this was like the closest thing to that. But last thing I want to talk about is some trade ideas, folks. I want to talk about, you can go check out the full article, but I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, the vibes of this. First of all, yesterday it was revealed by Mr. Jeff Passan, breaking news, that the Miami Marlins, this shocker, right, that they're selling, uh, they traded away left-handed reliever A.J. Puck for some of their prospects. The Diamondbacks are getting the bullpen they've been seeking, and trade season is officially on, reading from Jeff Passan. So one of the things we actually mentioned not so long ago on this podcast was, like, the things to look for. Uh, for the Padres in the second half. And one of them was pay attention to see if some other teams become buyers or sellers, mainly the D-backs. And I thought, hey, D-backs, Christian Walker's free agent after the season, one of their best players. Um, Jordan Montgomery and Eduardo Rodriguez have barely been available. They lost Merrill Kelly for the season. Corbin Carroll has regressed significantly. So there was reason that I was thinking maybe they're going to decide whatever. 
But given that I've heard from other people and what it seems like is that the D-backs have a really good farm system, maybe they're thinking, ah, screw it. Maybe we'll use Christian Walker, but let's still go for it because we still have the arm or the farm system that can give us some extra ammunition if we want to make some moves in the offseason, maybe sign a couple guys, maybe trade for some guys. So they're saying, ah, it's whatever. Even if this doesn't work, we'll be okay. And they probably didn't have to give up uh, too much of a prospect haul for a reliever. But hey, shouts to them. That is a big addition for them. And you know the Padres need to go for some. So that kicking off trade season, they're buying. And I don't think it was for sure that they were going to buy. And the Padres are definitely going to buy too. I mean, people have been talking about them for weeks. Frankly, as I'm recording this, a trade could go down. I hope it doesn't because that would be stinky. But really excited for it. In terms of relievers that I think the Padres should go for, I think that there's a few. I think there's a few. I think there's three, um, potentially. Now, I only highlight three because I think that, you know, there's there's teams that have starting pitchers, and that's why I'm highlighting three. I think the three of them, you could also go for starting pitchers. Um, with the Angels, Carlos Estevez, I've brought him up before. Um, he's been really, 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 really good this year. Um, the Padres' bullpen in high-leverage situations this year is ranked 20th in Major League Baseball. They have, let's see here, where is it anyway? Uh, 7.27 ERA in high leverage situations. That's ranked 24th in Major League Baseball. Now, Carlos Estevez and the Angels. The Angels actually rank 6th in high leverage situations this year in terms of their bullpen. Their ERA, much better. And Estevez has a been a, has been a, has a, been a um, major part of that. He's always been a solid relief pitcher. Um, I think in a lot of ways he's been okay. Um, you know, not all, I shouldn't say always, I shouldn't say always, but he's always had strikeout stuff, always had strikeout stuff. You know what I mean? He's always been able to miss some bats, but he's never been able to couple that with a decent walk rate. And he's certainly never been able to couple that, which is not giving up nearly as many, you know, hard hit balls. Then he went to the angels and last year he was pretty effective. You know what I mean? His home run um, rate went down and his strikeout rate was through the roof, but his walk rate was way too high. And this year it's at a minuscule 4% compared to a 25.8% strikeout rate. I think the guy's legit and also 31 years old, I know, but free agent after the season, at least I'm pretty sure. Um, Yes, after the season. It's about average annual 6.75 right now. I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing for the Padres to try and prioritize some guys that are going to be free agents after the season because it won't cost as much. And it fits in with, this is my opinion part, that you shouldn't go crazy with this team. I still think that they have a lot to prove. They still have shown you a lot. They're really good right now. Don't get me wrong. But I still think that it wouldn't surprise us because this is how we felt after the Milwaukee series. What'd they do? Mariners. D-backs, Braves, all that stuff. Like, they didn't play well, and then they were back to 500, right? Or one game above 500 heading into the break. So I would not super commit. And what better than getting some rentals, at least in my opinion. I'm not saying I would hate going for some starting pitchers with some years of control, but I just feel like the ones that have control are going to cost a little bit too much. And with the report that Leody DeVries, who, by the way, had a nice hit in yesterday's game, that was sick. Um, He has four home runs. By the way, his past six games. So DeVries, one of those golden egg prospects. And then, of course, Ethan Salas. Reportedly, those guys are off the table. So what are you willing to give up? Do you want to give up a Lesko? Do you want to give up a Snelling? Right? We want to have some ammunition out there. And in my opinion, going for rentals can not only help the Padres this year, but it means that they're, you know, if their salary financial situation doesn't improve, they don't have more salary carrying into next year. And then they can use that this summer when, by the way, Blake Snell might enter free agency again. There's going to be interesting free agents from Walker Buehler to all these guys that maybe you can take a, a, some flyers on some guys in the offseason instead of over committing right now to some guys. That's just me. I understand. I get it. I get the, the, you know, the average annual for some of these guys won't be nearly as much as some of the guys you might sign in free agency, but that's just me. I would like to see it play out. Um, so Carlos Estevez is one to look out for. And then there's also Pete Fairbanks of the Tampa Bay Rays. Kind of the same thing. He's very good. His strikeout rate has gone down, though, 22.4% compared to a career 31.8. But at the very minimum, we've seen how effective he's been before in past years. And his salary is very negligible. And if he were to revert to his more dominant ways, the club option, they can use that. He has a club option. So that's very good if they want to keep him um, you know, for another year, if they're really worried about that bullpen. And the Braves are notoriously cheap, so you can target him. And then last one, Andrew Chafin from the Detroit Tigers. 
This guy is a monster. He's been a monster for a long time. He is 34. That's going to turn off some people, right? Oh, I don't want to get a you know an older player or whatnot. But he's been solid for a few years, right? This season in particular has been phenomenal. Nice peripherals, a lower FIP than his ERA, all that stuff. And perhaps one of the better sliders out there. 53% whiff rate on that thing. All of the pitches this year, unlike some previous years, opponents are not hitting them. And especially his slider. 53% whiff rate is freaking absurd. Uh, so that's a guy you can get. And by the way, he has a club option for next season. So the Padres don't want to do it. You don't want to kill any of your future flexibility. You don't want to carry some more salary into next year. It's a contract you can do right now, and it'll be done after the season. So love that. Then, in my opinion, I think there's three starting pitchers that I like. You know? I think there's actually, I think there's two starting pitchers that I like. My apologies, just two. Zach Eflin of the Tampa Bay Rays. That guy's been good for a while now. And I'm buying, I, I think that guy's good. I think Zach Eflin's good. I, I really do. And I think that, yes, he's having a little bit of a down season. Not a bad season. But I like that his salary, $13 million, You would have him for next year too. You know, if they do want to do something like that and they say we want to take some guy who we don't know if he'll be you know, as good next year. But to me, I think he discovered something with the Rays. And I think that at the minimum, he's just giving me an okay starter. And hey, maybe Ruben Niebel can make him better. But 3.37 expected ERA. Yes, his strikeout rate went down, but he doesn't walk many batters. He's been consistent in that front for a while now. I don't know, folks. I think that he's got some better luck heading his way. And I think he could be a little bit of a, a buy low right now. And honestly, we beat the Rays the past two trades, so why not go for a third, right? Um, so I would like to do that. I think that'd be good. And third, he's not too old either. So I think there's some upside with him. And then the other one, if you want a big sexy move, I think the biggest sexy move you can make without giving up too much for, of the farm is Jack Flaherty. I think this is the one, guys. I really do. He's been absurd this season. It's been one of the low-key, like more surprising things to happen this year. He's been amazing. 2.95 ERA this season and a 3.10 FIP, 32% strikeout rate, only a 4.6% walk rate. So he's not getting super lucky and he's striking out batters. I thought he was cooked, but don't worry. If you are worried, I was someone who was worried about him because I thought his arm was just gone. Clearly not this season. He's only this year. So that is a, an arm you can get for a, you know, a little bit of a prospect return. Maybe you have to give up you know, a Valenzuela. Maybe you have to throw out maybe you know one of the lower tier prospects. Maybe you have to do that. But you definitely don't have to get rid of a lot of your top guys because it's only for the rest of the season. And he would be the best pitcher, in my opinion, that you can get without giving up those golden egg prospects and without severely crippling yourself. At least I think. I'm pretty certain, folks. I don't know too much. I might be an idiot. I've actually heard... That Jack Flaherty, that there was actually a report um, not too long ago that they said, like, the return might be, like, what the Phillies gave up for Michael Lorenzen, right? Which, by the way, was not a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was not a lot. So I just feel like that could be really interesting. This was actually attributed to, let me see where I can find. Um, it was on Odyssey. It was, like, some kind of, um, I forgot who it was that went on there. Uh, Morosi, I think it was. Um, John Morosi of MLB Network, I think, went on. And that was one quote. And that story is on Odyssey right now if you want to go um, listen to that. Um, so, you know, Michael Lorenz in that haul was not a lot. So if it's not going to take too much to get Jack Flaherty, I would freaking do it, man. You get Jack Flaherty, you get one of the relievers I mentioned. I think that's kind of what um, the best you could ask for, right? I really do. I think that's the best you could ask for. So let me know, guys, what you think in the comments about those trade ideas. You could also check out the article when it is live. It should probably be live by the time you're listening to this on justbaseball.com if you're a fan of my writing. But folks, that's about it. Don't you love the Padres and baseball sometimes? Every now and then you're happy to make it. You're happy to be out there. What a time to be alive. But that about does it, of course, for today's edition of the Lockdown Padres podcast, the only pod that may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts from. Follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Padres or Lockdown Padres on YouTube. And me, the best handle in the game at Javipeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O. And until next time, stay safe and, of course, stay faithful. My fire faithful homies, take care.